This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. 22-year-old killed at birthday party in alleged gang-related drive-by shooting. A 22-year-old man was shot and killed during a drive-by shooting in Rose Heights, St. James, on Wednesday night. The deceased man has been identified as Giovanni Brown of an Amity Cambridge address in the parish. According to the police, Brown was attending a birthday party in a section of Rose Heights called the Village Top when the shooting occurred. The news learned that a now deceased man was standing with a group of individuals at approximately 10.45 p.m. on Wednesday when the occupants of a black Toyota Corolla motor car opened a gunfire hitting him all over his body. The police were summoned and upon arrival, Brown was seen lying on the roadway in a pool of blood, a police source told the news. Brown was transported to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Unconfirmed reports are that the man's shooting death is gang-related, as a well-placed source told the news that Brown was attached to the Preke gang, which is said to be located in Cambridge. 17-year-old shot dead in Westmoreland A 17-year-old boy was shot dead in a yard on Ricketts Avenue in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland on Thursday morning. The deceased has been identified as Jerry Francis, otherwise called J who is unemployed and is off a Ricketts Street address. Ricketts Avenue is a part of the Zone of Special Operations in Savannah Lamar. In January of this year, Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared a Zone of Special Operations in Savannah Lamar South to cover the communities of Russia, Darling Street and Dexter Street. In his declaration, Holness stated that these areas have been captured by gangs and are currently in the grips of terror. A resident who did not want to be identified told the news that she was awoken by the sounds of gunshots minutes after 3 a.m. and later heard that a man died in the community. The yard the deceased was found in, the resident said, is often used by persons as a shortcut to enter another community. Reports from the police are that residents heard explosions at about 3 a.m. and Francis's body was later found at 5.20 a.m. with multiple gunshot wounds to the head and the body. He also had lacerations to his neck. Francis was taken to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. St. Thomas Man Killed on His Veranda A St. Thomas man was shot and killed at his home Wednesday night. He has been identified as Odin Thompson of Hartis Yalas in the parish. Reports are that about 10 p.m., Thompson, along with other people, was sitting on his veranda when men entered the premises and opened the gunfire, hitting him several times. Odin is the brother of Alwyn Thompson, who was killed in April this year by the police in a double fatal shooting. In that incident, both the men were killed after one of them allegedly pointed a gun in the direction of the lawman who took evasive action and fired at them. Alwyn Thompson is said to have a criminal history in the parish after being charged several times before. He has also done prison time. Costa Bus Catches Fire on Constant Spring Road a public passenger coaster bus caught fire on a section of Constant Spring Road near Mary's Brown Corner in St. Andrew on Thursday morning. There were no injuries, the Jamaica Fire Brigade said. It received a call sometime after 8 o'clock. The cause of the blaze is not yet known. Motorists headed towards the Manning's Hill Road and the Manor Park were affected. Alfonso Warren sentenced to life imprisonment for wife's murder. Jamaican-born Canadian Alfonso Warren, who was found guilty of killing his wife seven years ago, has been sentenced to life imprisonment. Warren is to serve 18 years before he is eligible for parole. Prior to handing down the sentence in the Home Circuit Court on Thursday morning, Justice Leighton Pusey said that the case was a crime of passion that arose from a domestic dispute. Justice Pusey said Warren's actions showed disregard for his family. Warren's wife, Stephanie, was stabbed to death at the couple's home in Kingston on December 31, 2015. The Warrens moved from Canada to Jamaica in 2009 following their conviction in the baby Angelica case in Toronto. The couple's eight-month-old daughter, who became known as Baby Angelica, was found dead in a freezing North Toronto parking garage in 2008. In 2012, the couple was convicted in Jamaica 
with her concealing the death and the failing to bury the body of their two-year-old son, known as Baby Joshua. Jackson proposes alternatives to Highway 2000 toll hike. Member of Parliament for St. Catherine South, Fitz Jackson, says that there are options available to the government which would spare motorists from higher toll rates to travel on the east to west leg of Highway 2000. With the operators proposing to hike the rates effective Saturday, Mr. Jackson has suggested that the government forego some of the revenues it earns from the highway, at least for a time. Mr. Jackson told the news that the financing arrangement for Highway 2000 could also be amended by extending the payback period of the financing and applicable interest charges. On Monday, the Toll Authority of Jamaica said the two operators of Highway 2000 were not in a position to delay the rate increase. Toll Authority CEO Leron Leng told the news that several factors were considered before the application was submitted, including that the operators had delayed the increase, which was granted in 2020. The news has been informed that more than 30 submissions have been received by the Toll Authority regarding the proposed price changes. When contacted, Mr. Leng said that because of technical issues, other submissions were received after the deadline on Tuesday but will still be considered. Following the publication of the notice of the increases on Friday, members of the public and the interested groups were given five days to make submissions in writing concerning the new rates. Accused in Clarendon family's killing gets attorney. Roshane Barnett, who was arrested following the killing of a woman and her four children in Cocoa Piece in New Road, Clarendon, now has legal representation. During a hearing in the Home Circuit Court on Thursday morning, it was disclosed that, that Mr. Barnett will be represented by attorney Tamika Harris. His return date for court was changed to July 28. This is to facilitate the completion of a psychiatric evaluation. Mr. Barnett, who is 23 years old, made his first appearance in court on Tuesday via a voluntary bill of indictment, which allows for his case to bypass a parish court hearing. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions served a notice of death penalty on him. There was a large turnout in Cockapiece on Wednesday night at the candlelight vigil for the five family members killed. Nadine Gay Little, principal of Beulah Primary and Infant School, where two of the victims attended, said that the support shown is an indication that the residents are still coming to grips with the tragedy that has rocked the country. Mrs. Gay Little said grief counseling is still being provided for students and the staff. Students have also had to relocate from the classroom of one of the victims because they were having trouble functioning due to the trauma caused by the incident. Mental health intervention in schools to be extended. The Ministry of Health is expected to extend the mental health intervention at schools into the new academic year following preliminary data and feedback from sessions held this week. A team of mental health professionals has been visiting schools since Monday as part of efforts to help children deal with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The initiative is a collaborative effort between the Ministries of Education and Health. Dr. Kevin Goldburn, Director of Mental Health and the Substance Abuse in the Ministry of Health, says the guidance counselors have also reported being overwhelmed by the number of students exhibiting behavioral problems. We have had students who actually have stayed away from school from February. I have a particular person who I know who has stayed away from school from February because she found it very difficult readjusting back to school. So yes, we have summer breaks when they're out for about two or so months, but it has been two years, two years of staying home. And actually, some of them may have to like staying home because staying home, they have to get up early in the month of the school. They can just put on a shirt and go to class in five minutes. Then this readjustment to going to school, traveling, all those things have caused a stress for our students. The teachers themselves will have felt so comfortable being at home, online teaching. You know, students in the same space with you. You can't see where they are being distracted and not paying attention as much as they would have done when they're in the classroom. And when you go back to school, back to the same space with the students, they are misbehaving, they are paying attention, they are trolling each other. So some teachers have actually found to be more stressful going back to school. But we are preparing now to see what can we do during the summertime and also we have plans for the new term because we suspect we may have issues continuing over to the new term as well.
Gun attack at the Clarendon shop leaves the one dead, two hospitalized. Three persons were shot, one fatally at a shop in Sandy Bay, Clarendon last night. The deceased has been identified as 26-year-old Dwayne Miller, also known as the Whisker. Reports from the Maypen police are that about 9.30 p.m., Miller was among a group of men at the corner shop when two men on foot approached and opened fire hitting him. The attackers then fled. The police were alerted and on their arrival, three men were discovered suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to the hospital where Miller was pronounced dead and the other men admitted for treatment. Police sources say intelligence has revealed that the attackers stemmed from an ongoing feud. Miller was gone down hours after the brazen morning murder of 27-year-old German Blackstock in the community of Riches in northern Clarendon. Between January 1 and June 26, a total of 39 people have been murdered in Clarendon. Man charged with murder of stepfather in Kingston Market A man who was accused of killing his stepfather during a dispute in the Oxford Mall Market in downtown Kingston was charged on Wednesday by the Kingston West Police. Robert Levy, 44, of Kingsland in Manchester, was charged with the murder of 42-year-old Damien Osborne, a vendor of a Charles Street address. Investigators reported that on October 21 last year, both men got into a dispute inside the market. It's alleged that Mr. Levy used a machete to chop Mr. Osborne several times. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.